And uh, it was during that time uh, when they had moved into this uh, apartment, which we actually have uh, some video of too. We have some video actually of the place where Doug was employed and the apartment itself. And they were in very close proximity to each other, say maybe a block at most. And um, during that time period, um, there was a renewed cycle of abuse going on between Doug and Larissa uh, at Larissa's expense. And there was also um, a deprivation of transportation. Uh, if I remember correctly, Doug was actually depriving Larissa of a, of a car that was basically hers. Yes, sir. I had purchased Larissa uh, uh, Pontiac Vibe, and it was her car. It wasn't, uh, it w uh, it wasn't Doug's, it was, it was hers. And it's like I said, Doug lived very close to his employment, but he would take uh, Larissa's car to work, leaving her at home, mm -hmm. uh, pretty much a prisoner in the, in the apartment. Mm -hmm. uh, and yes, during this time, uh, when Doug had moved back and it looked like I was going to be away for a while, uh, yes, the verbal abuse that she had been accustomed to with Doug started back up again. And the... Uh, there were bouts of depression that were beginning to take over again. Yes. And um, towards the latter end of uh, 2009, after you had been uh, basically locked in a cage uh, on ridiculous, uh, under ridiculous circumstances, um, there was a period of improvement, and it was because there was something in the works. And uh, can you get into that a little bit? Yes, sir. The uh, Larissa and I, uh, we had come to the conclusion at this time that the attorney that I had, had originally pretty much had sold me out, and if the only way that we were going to get results is if we did it ourselves. Uh, Larissa went to work, uh, going to uh, legal libraries, uh, looking up codes that I was going with on, petitioning the uh, federal clerk's office to rehear the case, and actually had gotten results. We had found out, thanks to Larissa's efforts, that they would rehear uh, my, my case and granted the appeal, all due to her efforts. And yes, she was very excited about it, to the point where the clerk had even told her at this time that uh, once my appeal was heard, it was very likely that I was going to be coming home. And she was you know, ecstatic about it. She was running around telling everyone in town that I was coming home, and she was, she was very excited. So, uh, just to basically sum all of this up, uh, there have been a lot of stories, you know, flowing around on the internet stating that Larissa had basically been beaten down by all of the, uh, all of the negative circumstances that have come into her life and that she had eventually taken her own. It should be noted that within the closing months before her passing that she was actually becoming an amateur lawyer, and she was doing a job that a so-called licensed lawyer was apparently unable or unwilling to do. And um, switching gears now, we're coming to uh, uh, October and then eventually the, the date of her passing in November, and all of this is going on. Um, how was Doug uh, taking the, this turn of events? Doug was becoming more and more irrational. Uh, he always had a, uh, a drinking problem. Uh, uh, and when I say two cases of Miller Light a day, that is not an exaggeration. Mm -hmm. That was that was what he lived off of. However, now his anger had surfaced to the point where it was noticeable to everyone. Uh, neighbors would hear them or hear Doug yelling at Larissa verbally all night, uh, calling her abusive names, uh, saying all their problems were, were her fault. Uh, Larissa kept asking him to leave. Uh, there were times we were on the phone in conversation that I would remind uh, Doug that it was uh, that he, when he left, it was not his car. That you know, to call his family, to kind of get him that it was Larissa's car. He was not going to take her car and leave. Uh, Larissa would tell him the same thing. Larissa warned him gone. She actually never warned him there to begin with, and but she was strong enough uh, mentally to know that she did not need Doug in her life. She did not want him in her life, and Doug. Uh, Literally refused to leave. It is uh, well known in this group that that was not. They were not together, and yes. that and Doug was not wanted in her life. It was commonly known. Now, uh, just to add a caveat to that, because the divorce papers had not been filed legally, 
and he had, you know, he had not told you, I think, at the time that they had not been filed, I don't think, but legally he was still allowed to be around because on paper they were still married, so to speak, correct? Exactly. Yes. Uh, Larissa and I, uh, well, I should say, mm -hmm. Larissa and I got the divorce papers in Florida. She signed them right in front of me, mm -hmm. left them in Florida for Doug to sign. And, of course, like you said, he, ne he never did, and he will, uh, to this day, if we could find him, yeah. would... Uh, deny that there was ever any force mm -hmm. uh, but uh, like I said, they, they, they did exist. Mm -hmm. He just, he, you're right there, he, he never signed. And, uh, but yeah, during that time when it looked like I was coming home, Larissa did all this work, uh, Doug became very outraged, 